You're about to see an incredible human document. An encounter with forces that no one on this earth really understands. You may find it shocking, impossible. But it is nevertheless evidence of a universe beyond the power of our five senses. It began at 14,000 feet above the barren wastes of North Africa in the summer of 1944. It happened to 2nd Lieutenant Wolensky of the United States Air Corps, Lieutenant Harold Wolensky of Chicago, Illinois. It could only have happened here, for the ever-shifting sands of the Sahara have drifted back and forth for many centuries, covering and uncovering civilizations that harken back to the very beginning of man's culture. Their dry and ancient weight still hides many secrets of antiquity, some of which may never be discovered, as this one might not have been except for the strangest story in the annals of archaeology. For when the almost lifeless form of Lieutenant Wolensky was found four days later, this key to the past was once again buried beneath the sand. If Lieutenant Wolensky had died on the Egyptian desert, that would have been the end of the story, as it was for too many in those years of 1941 to 1945. But Lieutenant Wolensky did not die. Not entirely. How's your health this morning, nurse? Fine. How's yours? Great. Well, where's my good morning kiss? Wolensky, you're incorrigible. Well, I wouldn't want you to feel that you're losing your appeal. Let's see, uh, 31 days stuck inside this thing. That's uh, 31 good morning kisses you owe me. Such a one-track mind. Ellen, nurse, I strongly suspect you're a cold woman, just like all the other British females. We're nothing at all like the females from your old Chicago, I assume. A different breed entirely. You know, if you English women don't change your attitude, the race of English men will soon become extinct. I gather you've made rather an extensive survey in this subject. Oh, I was stationed in London for six months. I had to do something with my time. Oh, of course. And naturally, nothing else occurred to you. Is there anything else? Wait a minute, nurse. Uh, would you mail this for me? My ex-wife in Chicago is asking for more alimony. <laughs> she says, uh, what do I need money for lying in the hospital? I told her to come and get it. Oh, you're a funny man, Walensky. Uh, more alimony. I tell you, nurse, more alimony for her boyfriends, that's what it is. Lieutenant. What? What, what is this? Well, I don't know. Well, did you draw it? Yeah, I guess so. I guess I, I just sort of doodled it. I'm a great doodler. <laughs> doodler? Yeah. That is hardly doodling. Well, what is it? Looks like old Egyptian writing. Hey, nurse. Maybe it's a secret code. Maybe I'm a Nazi spy. Well, in that case, I won't bring you any breakfast. Let someone else bring food to the enemy. Hey, I'm hungry. Just for seven hours, ain't I? are now seen to be inaccurate and premature. In view of uh, Dr. McAllister's findings at the Oasis of Corku. How are you this morning, Mr. Brimley? Well, according to your Dr. Beauvais, I can live forever if I don't move. An extremely bad bargain, as far as I'm concerned. Well, if you do what he tells you now, perhaps you can do what you want to do later. Hearts have been known to mend, you know. Save your fairy tales for your more gullible patients, nurse. Any letters for the post this morning? Uh, no, uh, perhaps later. Mr. Brimley, would you take a look at that? 
It is old Egyptian writing, isn't it? Who drew this? Lieutenant Walensky, the young flyer across the hall. I told him I thought it was. Uh, take me to his room. No, but the doctor said... Hang the doctor. The doctor has plenty of time. I haven't. I have a visitor for you, Lieutenant. All right, bring him in. Anything for a little action. My name is Brimley. I'm across the hall. So? Oh, this is not a social call, Lieutenant. Uh, that will be all, nurse. Thank you. No? Uh, maybe you want to sell me some sunburn lotion? I'm an Egyptologist, Lieutenant. Uh, an archaeologist specializing in the ancient Egyptian civilization. I work with the Egyptian Department of Antiquities. So? Well, obviously, you are very well informed on the culture of the pharaohs. But if there's any reason why you don't want to discuss it... Discuss what? Well, certainly you've done a great deal of work on the ancient hieroglyphics. I have? On the back of this envelope, you have drawn the seal and the personal motto of an ancient Egyptian monarch. Oh, well, something I saw in a museum, I suppose. When we were in grade school, he used to drag us to a museum every year. The existence of Prince Herkner was unknown then. Well, maybe I read it somewhere. No, Lieutenant, this information hasn't been published as yet, as you undoubtedly know. One of us is in the wrong kind of hospital, Brimley. How could I draw something like that if I never even saw it? That's a fascinating question. Ah, to say the least. Well, uh, what does it say, these uh, hieroglyphics? Well, as I said, this is the uh, symbol and the motto of Prince Hefner. It's rather ironic, too, because the very existence of Hefner has been one of history's best-kept secrets for over 4,000 years. And his tomb is one of the very few that has never been discovered. What a find that would be. Now, the best translation we have is, the glory of Herkna shall not die. His name shall pass from generation to generation forever. Yeah, the only name I want to pass from generation to generation is Wolensky. Now, you spent a few days wandering on the desert after you parachuted from your plane. Yeah, three days walking, and so they tell me, four days lying there flat on my back while I was acquiring this uh, Palm Beach suntan. In your wanderings in the desert, did you come across anything that could explain this? Uh, the only thing I came across was sand. Hot sand. Anyway, after the first day, I was three quarters blind from the glare. If your prince had come riding up to me on a four-humped camel, I probably wouldn't even have noticed him. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. Hey, uh, Brimley. Yes? How would you like to be a buddy? I beg your pardon? I've been trying to get my hooks on some booze ever since I woke up in this place. And uh, they won't let me move because of this thing on my face, but, uh, you get around pretty good in that go-cut of yours. How about finding me a bottle somewhere? Well, I wouldn't want to do anything that would cause any trouble. All right, all right, forget it, forget it. Now, it's about time. Uh, do you mind, uh, buddy? I'm hungry, and, uh, ancient history gives me a bellyache. Certainly, Lieutenant. Lensky, your manners are abominable. It's time you were in your bed anyway, Mr. Brimley. If the doctor caught you in here, he'd have my neck. Nurse, tell me what you know about that young man. Well, I don't know too much, except he's a very difficult patient. Samara. Samara. There is a river that flows through my heart and bends and turns to a temple and a city. There in the garden that grows to the river's edge, Samara walks.
Master Mara. Your prince commands. Tonight, at the apex of the moon, we will meet in the royal gardens at the river's edge. Tonight, Samara. Tonight. Some more coffee, Lieutenant. Uh-uh, you can take it away now. I've got something for you. What? Well, you showed such a flair the other day with a pencil. I thought you might like to do some sketching to while away the time. Well, 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 aren't you the little ray of sunshine? Therapy for the disturbed patient. Well, I only just thought that you might... Oh, all right, I'm sorry. I shouldn't open my big mouth. Well, Brimley, what's your problem today? I know it's a little bit early in the day for this sort of thing, but I thought you might like to have some of this. Brimley, I've done you wrong. Well, well, uh, sorry I only have the one glass, but uh, with this thing on my face, I'd have, uh, I'd have to make pretty much of a mess trying to rig out the bottle. <laughs> there you are. Oh, aren't you going to join me? Uh, not right now, thank you. Oh, go on. No, thank you. Huh. Mm. Uh, that's better. Okay, Brimley, I know you didn't bring me this booze out of the kindness of your heart. What do you want? Well, I know this may sound ridiculous to you, Lieutenant, but please bear with an old man. Does the name Samara mean anything to you, Lieutenant? At the moment, it seems to mean free booze. It doesn't sound at all familiar, even vaguely. If I say yes, do I get another shot? From the great oasis at Tartum. Lieutenant. And the people shall be freed of the harvest sickness. Yes. Yakna. Yakna. Huh? What's going on around here? What are you doing? Recording my snores or something? Uh, how do you feel, Lieutenant? Uh, I'm hung over, that's how I feel. What were you doing? This may seem very strange to you, Lieutenant. Perhaps by some happy accident, by a fantastic stroke of luck, I happen to be in this hospital with you now. What are you babbling about? You wouldn't understand it. I, I hardly understand it myself. <laughs> Nothing you said so far has made any sense. Wait a minute. Now listen to this. The divine journey shall be given to you by the twin gods of life into eternity. Hey, that's my, that's my voice. I am Herkna, one of the most royal blood. A double son of Ra. History shall know me as a great builder. What is this, a trick? This is no trick, Lieutenant. Well, what is it then, uh, hypnotism? I don't know what it is. Lieutenant, I want you to help me find the tomb of Prince Herkna. <laughs> you want me to help find you the tomb of Prince Herkna? <laughs> Lieutenant, I don't have very much time left. To find this tomb would mean a great deal to me. Uh, uh, all right, buddy. You get me another bottle of booze, and I'll help you find anything you want. <laughs> Congratulations, Lieutenant. For what? Dr. Bavay is coming in off to lunch to remove your... You mean... You mean this thing is finally coming off my face? Oh, what's with you? That's, that's excellent. And I'm afraid the charwoman is going to take a pretty dim view of your painting on the wall. Why didn't you use the pad I gave you? 
Brimley. I beg your pardon? Brimley. Brimley, Lieutenant. Well, sure, who else? Look at your hand, Lieutenant. I hope you're uh, fully prepared, nurse. Women have been known to faint with joy at their first sight of the Walensky face. Oh, I'm pretty sturdy, Lieutenant. I haven't fainted in days. Hold it steady for a moment, Lieutenant, will you? Mm-hmm. Well, here we are. <gasps> That's a pretty funny gag, but I'm not that beautiful. Okay. Choke's over. Mr. Brimley, do you understand what's happened to me? Understand? No one in the world understands these things. What are you going to do, Lieutenant? Go back to the States. Find myself a good plastic surgeon. Why? It's not such a bad face. Rather handsome, as a matter of fact. That's not mine. Who wants to see the face of a stranger every time he looks in the mirror? Are you sure it's such a stranger? Are you sure that you're still the same, completely the same, inside? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? Well, why do you have that face? Or... There... Where the rays of the morning light shall each new day shine through the grape. Look, I, I just came in here to say goodbye to you and to say I'm sorry I can't help you find this hurt in this tomb. I know how much it, it means to you, and I, I know you got some wild idea that you think I can help you, but. It's a waste of time, believe me. It'd be a waste of time. You're leaving tonight. The first thing in the morning. Oh. Good luck to you, anyhow, Lieutenant. Thanks. I can use it. I suppose you realize there's not the slightest chance in the world we'll ever find this Harkness tomb. Thank you, Lieutenant. I'll make the necessary arrangements immediately. Lieutenant. 
Lieutenant. Venez, apportez vos outils. C'est ici. Commençons. Prince Herknapp finally found his place in history. With the discovery of his resting place, the lasting glory he so desired was his. His tomb was moved intact to this Museum of Antiquities, a long way from the desert where Lieutenant Wilensky first began his amazing retreat in time. What about Wilensky? What about the man who was so incredibly possessed by the soul of another long dead? Well, his mission of discovery accomplished. Wilensky was restored to himself, but the marks of two men were left upon him. An ancient prince and Mr. Brimley, who died triumphant. Wilensky did not go home to Chicago, not at all. He too became a searcher after the secrets of man's journey through time. 